Running a little bit late today, that does happen from time to time, but better late than never. In today's weather, our first big freeze blankets the eastern states, while out west, a transition to a very stormy and changeable weather pattern. We'll go ahead and start with the surface map so you're not jumping in blind. What we see here is a large anticyclone covering much of the eastern and central states that is centered on the Ozarks, about 1029 millibars. East of that anticyclone, we have northerly flow, temperatures in the 40s and 50s early this evening from New York down to Tennessee, 48 degrees there just east of Nashville. Some of that cool air spreading into Texas, but you're probably looking at the temperatures. Check out those dew points. They are down in the 20s. This is some of the driest air that we've had in that part of the country in probably six or seven months. On the other side, southerly flow, but it's not a moist southerly flow. Again, lots of dry air. Dew points in the teens out there in Dodge City up to Grand Island and all the way up to about Mitchell, South Dakota. Warm front with downslope conditions, lee side troughing from Denver all the way up towards Sheridan. And here comes our next weather system out of the Great Basin area, Oregon and California, ushering in much cooler air from the Pacific. Then we take a look at the 500 millibar hemispheric chart. This is a little bit of old school meteorology. And we see one major trough on the East Coast, another in East Asia, and a slightly smaller trough in the Pacific and another one in the Black Sea area. So that comprises the four dominant waves. And superimposed on that is some smaller scale troughs. For example, that right there moving up onto the West Coast and another one moving into Europe. So if we look at that waveform diagram, these vertical lines, those are gonna be meridians. And that shows that this area right here, that's North America. Here we have Europe and here we have Asia. And the Y axis, that's going to be a measure of the height or the pressure in the upper levels. So very strong high pressure across Europe. And yes, we do see that right there. So this is pretty useful so we can quickly summarize what the waves are doing. And you'll see that it's dominated by this ridginess right there around the Pacific Ocean going into this trough on the east coast of the U.S. So it forms this shape kind of like this. See that right there? And you'll notice that as we go into late week, it kind of flips around and we get ridging on the East Coast. However, it quickly reverts early next week and we fall back into the same weather pattern. And that'll continue advecting some cold air into the Eastern and maybe the Central US, especially with this ridging being indicated off of the East Coast. And as we go later into October, it looks pretty much the same. That's an indicator of cold weather in the Eastern US and warm out West. In the northeastern U.S., definitely a cold advection pattern. This is classic. We see considerable stratocumulus all the way from the White Mountains of Vermont into New York, all the way to Ohio and Kentucky, and the appearance of lake effect clouds. See how the flow is dry and clear over Ontario, and then it flows over Lake Ontario and picks up moisture from the lake because the lake is still warm. It's very slow to get rid of all that heat that it picked up over the summer. And as a result, throughout the first half of winter, we do get a lot of these lake effect events. You can see that also over Lake Michigan, extending into South Bend and downstream from Lake Huron as well some rather stout convective elements due to that very long fetch along the length of that lake right there. At this hour, heading into night, we've got 30s and 40s all across New York, 40s across Pennsylvania, and 40s and 50s out in the Midwest. We do have freeze warnings tonight in the Hudson River Valley from Albany to Newburgh and over to Danbury, and Norwich, and those freeze warnings extend into Pennsylvania. 
And there you go. That's going to be the warnings and advisories. The dark purple, that's going to be the freeze warnings. Temperatures there, 28 to 32 degrees. The light blue, that's the frost advisories. Extending from New Haven over to the outskirts of Philadelphia and all the way into western Virginia, around Lynchburg and Roanoke. Freeze warnings all the way back into the Midwest region, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, all the way back to the Chicago suburbs, and over to St. Louis and Cape Girardeau. Temperatures there again, about 28 to 32 degrees. And in the southeastern U.S., again, freeze warnings all the way down to Asheville, still digging out from Hurricane Helene. And through the Piedmont region, we've got frost advisories from around Charlotte down to Atlanta, over to Birmingham and Huntsville. And there's the southeastern U.S. Extensive cold air advection across the entire region, but up in the northeastern U.S., enough instability to generate those stratocumulus elements. The air much drier as you go further to the west. Remember those dew points there in the 20s, so not really enough moisture to support a lot of cloud material. But if we look at the 850 millibar chart, this is great for visualizing the advection. First of all, we take a look at where the thermal troughs and thermal ridges are. So right in here, that's going to be the thermal trough. That's a pool of cold air down to minus 2. Very cold air aloft. And if you have any instability, any heating from the sun hitting the ground, all that can combine to produce those convective elements. And of course, the addition of instability from the lakes. As you go further to the west, we get into actually warm advection. We've got very warm air flowing in from the, originally from the plateau region of the western U.S., and that's made its way pretty far to the east. And that dividing line between cold advection and warm advection roughly running about like something like that right there. So cold air advection all the way down to the Gulf Coast region and warm air advection across the northern and central plains. Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas caught in the middle. However, that cold air is entrenched. Very light winds, anticyclonic flow, all that's going to spell a very cold night. So down to freezing across the Ozarks into Little Rock, maybe as far south as Hot Springs and Hope and very cold air, 30s and 40s, into Texas. In the northern plains, clear skies, but they are under the influence of that very strong southerly flow. Some of those strong winds starting to fan those wildfires in the Bighorn Mountains. You can see that right there. That's a smoke plume really flaring up later in the afternoon. And further to the west, some mountain wave clouds, out cumulus lenticularis, out cumulus standing lenticular right there around Helena, Great Falls, and looks like that gets overrun by the large Bear Clinic cloud shield. Showers all across the central Rockies into New Mexico, and they will be heading into a very wet pattern going into Thursday and Friday especially. There's a look at some of those temperatures in the northern plains. The remnants of that cold air found out east with temperatures in the 50s, but we warm up to 67 at Denver. As you go further to the north, 76 at Sheridan at this hour. That's close to those fires in the Bighorn Mountains. 77 at Billings, but we catch up to that Pacific front starting to move through western Montana, western Idaho, and northern Nevada. In the southwestern U.S., showers and maybe a few storms along the continental divide. And as we go further to the west, we get into that Bear Clinic weather system. We can probably get a better look at that shifting out into California and looking at the satellite picture there. And there we do see the tail end of that Bear Clinic cloud structure. Not a whole lot of cold air advection cumulus, stratocumulus. We have to pretty much go pretty far offshore to catch up with that. However, if we look at the large-scale sectors, let me pull this up real quick. We'll look at the water vapor imagery. And there we can see the structure. This is a baroclinic leaf, classic baroclinic leaf right there. And if you go by the definitions for locating a shortwave, we would find that right in here because we have this S shape on the backside. And another plume of moisture heading inbound from the western Pacific. This plume, 
will have major effects in British Columbia as we go into Friday. Let's take a look at the integrated vapor transport, see how that all plays out. This is where we're at right now. Actually, it's going to be right around here. You can see that that element, that cloud structure I was pointing out, that's going to be the nose, the bulk of the system still way out there in the North Atlantic, but that will hit the British Columbia coast going into Thursday night and Friday, and there will be some major effects there. And there it is. This is from the Canadian Weather Service showing that very strong onshore component between Prince Rupert and Bella Coola. And of course, much of the British Columbia coast and southeastern Alaska will get the effects from this. Strongest winds along the British Columbia coast where it's exposed to the Pacific, winds could be up to 50 to 60 miles an hour. And there will be effects inland. Much of northern British Columbia and southern Yukon will be getting their first major winter weather event of the season. So this is how we're looking for this evening at the moment, just looking at cold air advection flowing in, the bulk of the next weather system as well to the west. Moving up to Alaska, a little surge of cold polar air invading the interior regions, temperatures firmly down near freezing and even into the 20s. However, our first major weather event occurs also on Friday. Strong cyclogenesis in the northeastern Gulf of Alaska and the presence of that very cold air mass in the interior means strong gap winds. Those will be strongest near the passes with winds gusting 40 to 55 miles an hour. Let's show that to you on the surface charts. We've got the low pressure area near Valdez, another in the Aleutians. So this is kind of an area of low pressure. We've got the cold air mass in place in the interior. So all we need is to develop that pressure gradient and we definitely get that by Friday. Strong gap winds and you can see the isobars looks like about three of them. These are at four millibar intervals. So those are gonna be about 12 millibars across that distance. To the south, here's that big weather system approaching British Columbia. That's going to be the frontal system layout, and that'll gradually move inland as we go into Saturday and Sunday. Then we get a major atmospheric river coming in for Monday, first into western Alaska, ahead of this cold front, and that sweeps through the rest of the state going into Tuesday. So we're probably going to have some significant weather coming up for Monday, and then later in the week, more weather with another weather system approaching from the northwestern Pacific. And also in Alaska, the 11,000-foot volcano Mount Spur, located about 70 miles west of Anchorage, is under a yellow advisory. There's been some increased seismic activity there. No imminent eruption. If there was, we would get additional indicators, but there is the potential for some activity there maybe in the coming weeks or months. So they will continue to monitor that. Fortunately, this area west of Cook Inlet is not heavily populated. Most of the population centers are located through this area right there. Okay, yeah, completing our tour. Uh, yeah, you can definitely see that cold air right there over Alaska. That's a very distinct thermal trough. Looking at these blue dashed lines. So that's a pool of cold air, not only in the low levels, but also the mid levels. Out in Canada itself, we've got some cold westerly flow through the dew line area, the southern Arctic islands. However, temperatures somewhat moderate, looking at 20s and 30s right now. And then taking a look at southern Canada, we've got fair skies across the Great Lakes area into Quebec. That's the influence of that eastern U.S. high pressure area. Warm advection flowing into Winnipeg, Saskatchewan, triple point across southern Saskatchewan itself, and of course the occlusion over Alberta. So let's take a look at the forecast, and unfortunately these charts are not going to be analyzed, but I'll try to make some markings here where I can. This is going to be that Pacific system moving into the western U.S. tonight. Warm front into the Dakotas and the outgoing cold front south of Florida. And weather system there off the Atlantic. So there's the deeper part of that cold air all the way down to the Carolinas at this hour. And some of that extending up there into New York. All right, so we bring that forward into tomorrow. This is going to be tomorrow afternoon. 
some of that cold air starting to make it into the Dakotas. Not much progress into the central Rockies, but uh, the frontal boundary sitting about like that and maybe down to Tachby Pass. We see very strong downslope conditions across Kansas and Nebraska. We will have very gusty winds, possibly as high as 50 miles an hour around Garden City, Lamar, the usual areas up to Goodland, and possibly very gusty up further to the north. Cold air invading California. The Great Basin and the high deserts, the San Joaquin Valley cools off to low to mid 70s for highs, with Las Vegas looking at 83 for a high. We will also have some snow in the higher elevations of Wyoming. This is a map from the Weather Service showing the snowfall potential across Wyoming for Thursday and Friday. And you can watch this weather system roll through the central Rockies. Extensive snows in the higher elevations and also some lake effect rains around Salt Lake City. So this is how things are looking for Friday afternoon. Out east, we're looking at 60s and 70s as that air mass moderates. 80s in Florida, 80s along the Interstate 35 corridor. And you can see that Gulf moisture coming northward. I've got the bands of cloudiness outlined in gray. So that's going to be the flow of warm advection coming off the Gulf onshore around Corpus Christi, Brownsville, and just flowing right up there through the Caprock and Panhandles. And we could see some showers and thunderstorms in northeastern and eastern New Mexico from Roswell up to Clayton and Dalhart. So a little bit of marginal severe weather potential there. The main frontal system moving into the Albuquerque area down to Deming and connecting back up towards Denver and on up into northern Minnesota. So that's going to be the frontal system. As we go into Saturday, good chance of rain throughout the high plains of Colorado down into the same old area, Dalhart, Clayton. The main area of cold air is located across the southwestern region. This is a kind of map that we will see with a cutoff low. The main belt of prevailing westerlies well up to the north and this little feature cut off, but eventually it merges with the main prevailing westerlies as we go into early next week. And here we have a surge of cold air coming out of Canada. This is mostly heading for the Great Lakes area. Not much effect further south. And we get into the very last frame there. Another big weather system on the northwestern coast. Clear weather, warm advection, moderating conditions through the central U.S. And of course, more cold weather for the northeastern U.S. as this persistent Hudson Bay vortex pattern continues. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Again, your Patreon support is greatly appreciated. And you don't even have to sign up on Patreon. Just go to weathergraphics.com and chances are you can find one of my forecast books that will help you out and it will support the channel at the same time. Remember, if you do contribute on Patreon, you get not only the Monday videos, which are private, but you also get the peace of mind knowing that you're supporting this channel. And of course, your name goes up on those closing credits. So certainly consider that. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening and Thursday, and we'll see you back here on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.